Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Ohio Valley Conference, welcome back to the Bridgestone Arena for today's first post-game press conference featuring both teams from game one. A couple of housekeeping orders. Obviously, silence your cell phones. You haven't done it yourself yet. Every time we introduce a new dais, please identify yourself and your affiliation the first time you ask a question. We have two mic holders ready for you. Karen over here, Dawn over here. There is no flash photography allowed, no recording of any kind, including cell phone and tablet use. Today's sessions are 12 minutes long for each team. And you can ask questions of each of the gentlemen that are up here, coaches and student athletes alike. If the questions are too heavily weighed towards a coach, I have the discretion to dismiss the student athletes but since it's 12 minutes long, I don't think I'll have to do that. So they're 12 minutes, get the rotation by getting their attention or mine, and we'll have an opening statement from the coach as well. The advancing Bearcats will play the winner of Nevada and Texas tomorrow, I mean, uh, day after tomorrow on Sunday. Head coach Mick Cronin is with us, and the student athletes are Kyle Washington and Gary Clark. We're going to ask Mick to uh, open up with a statement. If you could switch those two nameplates, that would be good. I wish we could trade. <laughs> Give me some years back. <laughs> We're going to ask Mick to open up with a statement. Then we'll have questions for all three of the uh, members from Cincinnati. Mick, please. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Georgia State on their season. Coach Hunter's done a tremendous job there uh, since he's become the head coach at Georgia State. Uh, we expected uh, this to be a fight. Fortunately, I got mature kids that understood that uh, they were far from a 15 seed. You know, we believe in the Ken Palm and, the, and uh, efficiency ratings, which put them around a 13. And, uh, and then you combine the fact that they have a guy that could start for anybody in our conference in DeMarcus Simons. And they're, a, uh, they're an extremely formidable opponent, especially in a one-game shot because of their ability to put the ball in his hands and put shooters around him. Uh, very, very tough defensive assignment for our group of guys. We tried a lot of different things. The thing about my team is uh, we got some guys that care about winning. So it's easy to make adjustments during a game when guys uh, know that that's the key to winning basketball games, uh, get better on defense as the game goes on, which we continue to do. And if we want to continue to advance, that'll be the key for us. I uh, thought early on we were, we were trying to win with jump shooting. That's not who we are. Once we got back to focusing on what we do to win games, we started looking like the team that we are. We went, down, we went from down to up, and uh, they made a little run in the second half, but they're going to make some shots, guys. they got a really good team. So, again, congratulations to Coach Hunter uh, and his players on their season. It wasn't anything. We did not play bad, or badly, I should say, or poorly. They, they have a very good team. Questions for all three gentlemen. Start right here on the aisle. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Goldsmith, SB Nation. Uh, obviously, our goal is to go farther than this in the tournament, but do you see reasons to celebrate this win? No, we're worried about one game at a time. Uh, and we don't worry about what other people might say our goals are. We're just trying to win today. And we don't believe in entering a tournament to get to the second round or the fourth round. If you're in the tournament, you're trying to win the tournament. That might be the Tiger Woods in me. I just, I, I don't believe in elite eights and all that stuff. So if we win three more in a row, I won't be celebrating. I'm not going to be celebrating. No, no, no. That's not, I do things differently than other people. You know, we've already had a great season, no matter what happens. We've had an unbelievable season. We're in a tournament right now. There's five games left to win it. 
And that's, I think that, and that will be, that's always been my mindset, no matter what our seat has been. As long as I'm the honored to be the head coach at Cincinnati, to me, you enter a tournament to win it. There's no, you know, there, at the end of the year, that's what banquets are for. Uh, so, that, and that's what I want my kids to believe, that, that we're in the tournament to try to win the tournament. On the right back there, Don. Last Better week. ask them. They got you guys on the clock now. I heard something about 12 minutes. Kyle, can you talk about your second half and your ability to get down low and score some buckets? Uh, I think I was rushing a little bit in the first half, and I think, uh, you know, I was just wanted to wanted to contribute for my team. But I had to just read the defense and see how they were playing me a little bit. This team was known for strips and uh, taking the ball away from the post once you turn around and show the ball. So I just had to have some composure in the second half, and my teammates did a, did a great job of finding me. Gary did, Jaron did, everybody did, honestly. So I just wanted to help my team out however I could. Left-hand side. Uh, David Weiss, Long the News Record. Gary, this is your fourth uh, NCAA tournament. Um, what have you learned in the past that's maybe helping you this time and this year in your senior year? Like Coach said, it's one game and out. You know, in this game we had to adjust, and every game that's, that's how it'll be. You know, you just got to adjust to what the team's doing, and our adversity allows us to do that pretty well. So, you know, being my fourth year, you know, tell your young guys to it, just – Enjoy it, you know, live in the moment and not get too riled up by the, the crowd and all that. Just just do what we've been doing all year. And I'm Jerry Bembry from Undefeated. Uh, for Gary and Kyle, just about Simon's play, you know, Coach said he can play for anybody in your conference. What did you guys think about his performance tonight? Kyle, you first, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, like we said before, um, we have to tip our hat to Georgia State. They're a hard-playing program, a well-coached program. And, you know, he played extremely hard. He played with a chip on his shoulder, and uh, he made some tough shots. And uh, he has good size. So, I mean, all, the whole team played extremely hard. So, you know, you have to commend them for that. And, you know, we're just happy to get out of here with a win. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, him, the way he started off the game, you know, getting them going early, you know, with his knocking down his uh, knocking down a three and getting to the rim, you know, just – Second half, we just had to adjust and try to slow him down a little bit. Right here in the front row. Jarrell rushing the signal. Coach, can you speak a little bit about you all out-rebounding Georgia State as well as shooting more threes than them when they are a three-point shooting team? Well, I think you got to give them credit for the – we don't want to shoot 33s. They forced us to. I think they do a good job with their defense. They play very similar defense to us. And fortunately, we, we didn't have to play them on one day prep. But it still forced us to take more threes than we wanted to. Uh, and that's why they're ninth in the nation, I think, in field goal percentage defense. As far as out rebounding them, uh, obviously our size advantage. But uh, we, that was a big part of the game plan. You know, if we don't turn the ball over, we rebound the ball at a high, at a high clip. Almost 39% of our misses we usually get. We thought we would get more than that today if we didn't turn it over. Uh, Jaren, I, now, I didn't see it coming, Jaron Cumberland getting eight offensive rebounds, but you know, he, he, was, he was awesome today. I mean, he was the best player on the floor. I like the bow tie. There are about four minutes left in the session. Anything else for the – yes, right there, Don. Thank you. Jeff Warner at WCPO.com. Um, Kyle, maybe you can uh, speak to this. We've, we've seen Gary's demeanor throughout his career, whether things are going well or not going well, kind of has that calm presence and leadership on the court. What's the influence that that, that, that brings for the rest of the guys on the team? Uh, I think it's just a calming presence and, you know, he has quiet confidence. You know, he's done damn near everything that you can do in this program in, in terms of achievements and benchmarks. So I'm just glad to be uh, his front court mate. And, um, you know, I'm glad that our two kind of type of energies kind of play off of each other and, and help it, you know, have a pretty 
a pretty good, uh, you know, atmosphere for the team. So I'm just happy for that, and, and you know, we're just going to keep on doing what we do. Anything else for the Bearcats? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Congratulations. See you Sunday. Georgia State Panthers are with us now. Isaiah Williams, Demarcus Simmons, Jordan Session represent the student body. Head coach Ron Hunter is here as well. We're going to ask him to make a statement on the game. Then we'll go to questions for all four gentlemen from Georgia State. Ron, please. Well, I'm really proud of, uh, of our young men. I thought uh, we got wore down under about the four or five minute mark and their offensive rebounding uh, kind of kind of got us. But uh, I thought these kids represented our institution and the city of Atlanta extremely well. Um, uh, this is a group that uh, uh, most of us will be back. Um, I thought uh, Zeke coming off the bench was uh, was really big in the second half. We were able to get the lead, uh, but their size their size was uh, uh, was just really the factor. I was really pleased defensively. Uh, we had a goal that we wanted them to shoot 25 to 33s. We wanted to hold them under 40% shooting. We were able to get that done. Everything we, the only box we didn't check was the rebounding part. Um, and that's kind of been Achilles heels of us all year. But um, man, I am, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of these guys here. Uh, as we continue to build this program and, and, and continue to make uh, uh, runs in this NCAA tournament, um, I, these kids are, are, are unbelievable. And um, um, I just love them to death. Questions for any of the Panthers or the head coach? Right in the back there, Dawn, please. Uh, Jerry Bemery for the undefeated. DeMarcus, you were hot early on. What did they do differently later in, in the game to uh, try to combat that? Um, if you were watching the game, you could see that they went to the zone. And uh, they really took away my penetration. So I started facilitating the ball a little bit more. and. Uh, yeah, this just really took away my penetration. Charlie Goldsmith, SB Nation coach. What did you think you guys did that frustrated Cincinnati the most? Well, we have pride in our defense, and I challenged our guys. I said, if this is the second best defense in the country, then what are we? And so I thought defensively we were really good. I thought we really confused them. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I wish we had played Thursday because the less preparation. I mean, our matchup is something different. You know, it's like playing Georgia Tech in football. You know, if you don't see it that often, and, and, we, and we switched some things up, and we, every other possession we would change some different things to kind of confuse them a little bit. Um, part of our defense is to have a confusion between the point guard and the head coach. And again, we thought that they, they were just trying to figure out what we were doing. And, and our guys kind of feed off that. They know when a team doesn't quite know um, how to attack our matchup. And so we, we never really call it a zone because uh, it's really not a zone. We call it a matchup. And so uh, we wanted to prove defensively, and we want to hold them on a 40% shooting, which we did for most teams all year. And so uh, I was really proud of it. And again, Cincinnati's a great team. They're one of the top 10 teams in the country. And I just told our kids, if they're one of the top 10 teams in the country and what we did defensively, just think how good we can really be if we keep growing. Uh, Bennett Durando, the man eater. Coach, you mentioned rebounding. Cincinnati had 20 offensive boards in the game. How can you describe how detrimental that was, especially in the second half when you guys were trying to make that run? The man eater? What, uh, <laughs> that's cool, man. I don't know. I've never heard of that before. They said the man eater, guys. Well, they man ate us on the glass. And uh, <laughs> that's about the best I can say. Man eater, they man ate us on the glass, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, we knew that was going to be a problem. And that's what, uh, that's what they do. They're a, good, they're a good basketball team. And they got a shot to get to the Final Four. And uh, the difference of the game for us was just the rebounding. And uh, Coach, uh, the Xavier group, we're talking about uh, DeMarcus and how he can probably play for anybody in their conference. Can you talk about his game today and uh, what he's done for this team this season? Well, he's done this all year for us. He, he's a tremendous player. And, and as I've said to many people before, he's only scratching the surface. Um, I think he's one of the best guards in the country. I know he's the best player in the state of Georgia. Uh, and so uh, he's tremendous. And he's only going to get better. He's only going to get better. Um, you know, we, we're very fortunate. We had a first-round draft pick in RJ. And one day soon, this kid's going to be a first-round draft pick. 
no doubt about it. And so uh, to be able to say that, you know, it, it, coming from Georgia State in, a, in what last three years is a pretty a great accomplishment. But this kid can really play. But he's got great teammates, and he'll tell you that. You know, we, he's got great teammates around him that can, that can make shots. And so uh, I'm proud of him because his development as a person is what I'm proud of. He's really developed as a he's, – he's turning into a great young man. And that's, that's – I'm more proud of that than I am the basketball part. Coach, uh, this is a question for everybody, really. Um, I know the loss is kind of fresh right now, but looking forward to the future, uh, Kane Williams, a freshman, uh, where, where do you guys see him going in the future and uh, what has he brought to the team this year? Okay, did, did you say you wanted everyone to answer? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go with Isaiah first, then Jordan, then Demarcus, and the Coach. Kane, he's going to be a great player for this program. Like, he um, – <laughs> Uh, Kane's going to be a special player for Georgia State. So you can see he handles the ball well. He's a great defender. He controls the tempo so well. He's a great teammate. He cheers for every bucket that anyone scores. He doesn't care who scores. He just wants to go out there and play the game the right way. So he's going to be very special for Georgia State in the next couple of years. Uh, yeah, Kane, Kane's pretty good. So, yeah, he's pretty good. He'll be good next year. He'll be good the year after that. So, yeah. And I'll answer this. Is that... Yeah, Kane's a good player, but I, I'd rather you ask about my senior sitting up here. These guys have done a great job, man. They've led this program, and, and, and they've done nothing. Jordan is the only player in school history that have played in the NCAA twice. And more importantly, both of these dudes in six weeks are going to graduate. And as I said in this press conference before, this is what, these, this is what Division One basketball is about. Not all the crazy stuff that we read about. All the, This is what it's about. It's about these guys coming in here, playing hard, getting to the NCAA tournament, graduating, and becoming a great part of our society. And we get lost in all this other mess that we, we talk about with college basketball. We need to spend more time on what happened with, about these type of young kids. That's what college basketball is all about. We have six minutes to go. We have three questions up. Go, please. Uh, DeMarcus, do you think Cincinnati and you guys were feeding off of each other's energy? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, they play really hard, and, and we knew they were going to play hard. We watched the film on them, and they play hard all year. So. And they knew we were going to come in. We were going to play hard. And I mean, you could just feel the energy like everywhere. The atmosphere is crazy. Uh, we made some runs. They made some runs. And uh, at the end, it just, you know, the rebounding was too much. And we just ran out of gas. David Weiss on the news record. Coach, can you talk about Jaron Cumberland's game and why it was hard for your team to slow him down today? Well, one, you know, you can't take everything away. And so, again, we knew that we don't particularly worry about a particular player. Uh, but we have goals that we wanted them to shoot as many threes as we possibly can. We wanted that because we wanted long rebounds. And so he just made some really, really good plays. Uh, we thought we, we had him going. We, we slowed him down early. Um, but he, he has a great basketball IQ and, and really made some great plays for them. Uh, again, it, you know, we can not neutralize all of them. And one great thing about Cincinnati is that you can't really key in on one player. And so you got to kind of take some things away. We wanted to take the, the paint away, take some of the bigs away. Uh, we wanted to make the point guard more of a jump shooter. Um, but he made really good plays, and he's a good player, and that's why they're in this position. Thank you. Uh, Ron, Mark Bradley from Atlanta. Um, under eight timeout, you're down four. You have to think this is – we've got the game we want here. Uh, and then the game goes away pretty quickly. What, what happened there? Did they just yeah. – they start making and you didn't? Yeah, Mark, I, I, it's funny because I, I said this to my staff coming out. Um, we got to the eight-minute mark, and I looked at our guys, and, we, and I, we looked fatigued. We were tired. And we were tired not because we weren't in shape. The, the physicality of Cincinnati finally wore on us a little bit. And that was something I was concerned about going into the game, but we were able to handle it. Uh, but uh, the under-eight timeout, I looked at the markers and just the physicality, uh, Malik and some of the guys, Sesh, uh, it just wore on us a little bit. And it wore on us because now all of a sudden we were missing those jump shots. You know, we're a jump shooting team, and so we couldn't come down and hit the, hit the jump shots. So we had some great looks. If we had hit a couple of those looks that we had, uh, it could have been a different outcome. But the f physicality kind of got into our legs, and that's kind of what I saw at that. Uh, it's about that seven-minute mark. Three questions are up right here. Go. This question is for the seniors, for Jordan and Isaiah. Can you describe a moment? I, I know it's emotional right now, but a moment through this experience that will stick with you that is kind of a, a bright spot in this enjoyable experience. Jordan, first, please. Um, <laughs> um, during the course of the game, like you said, it got really physical. And we got down, I think, 10 maybe with about seven minutes or so. And um, I just, 
I looked at everyone's face and <laughs> we didn't fold, we didn't shake, we didn't seem like we were going to lose the game at any point. We were all smiling, clapping, ready to play, ready for the next possession. And we all kind of picked each other up and at that moment I realized that we were all, we were all a brotherhood. This is a great group of guys, we're a great team, we're a great team. We have a great player in DeMarcus, a great coach, great staff. and. It's just moments like that where I realized I really made a family here at Georgia State. So it was a great moment for me personally. Uh, big on what Jordan said, at the end of the game, we uh, were down 15 and uh, it was pretty emotional for all of us and we all huddled up. And then, I mean, we realized how close we really were, how close of a family we are. Um, Christian Crittenden, a signal from um, Jordan and Isaiah. You guys have um, had a great career here at Georgia State, so how do you guys remember your time here? Isaiah, you're first this time. Um, yeah, all the, all the, uh, <laughs> I can't get this guy to shut up most of the time, too, you know? I got to, you guys ask some questions when I get him in a timeout. I'm trying to get him to shut up. And now you get him up here, and now he can't speak, so. You good, man. <laughs> Seth, you got it. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> How will you remember How your you time remember? at Georgia we'll, State? We'll probably remember this, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I remember my time at uh, Georgia State as an exciting one. Uh, we won a lot in the last couple of years, so I'll remember that. I remember we ran the state of, the state of Georgia. I remember we win. I think we went to the conference tournament every year, of course, but we've been to the NCAA tournament twice for myself personally. And this is a, couple, a lot of these guys' first time, but they'll be back next year. So that's exciting for me. I think my favorite thing about Georgia State is the fact that we win every year consistently. So that's been big for me personally. Final question right here. Yes, two, fine. <laughs> All right, first question for DeMarcus. What did you learn basketball-wise and just personal and life-wise from Jordan and Isaiah at your time at Georgia State? I mean, you know, basketball-wise, you know, Sesh, just, Sesh and Isaiah just, you know, taught me just to always keep that confidence in myself, you know, at all times. Like, points in the season, I get down on myself, you know, I, I struggled a bit, but they always kept me up. And, you know, life-wise, you know, I mean, my brothers, so they always got some life advice for me. So, you know, I really appreciate that. For coach, um, despite only having three assists as a team, you all hung in there for the most part until like the eight, seven minute mark. How were y'all able to do that and what happened after then? Well, I mean, our kids, they, our guys, they were ready to play. You know, they were ready to play. And again, I just said toward the end, we just, uh, the, the physicality kind of got us. And uh, I love how we came out in the second half. I thought we were extremely aggressive in the second half and came out and, and uh, kind of made a run. And, um, again, we just got to that seven-minute mark, and just uh, the, the, their, their physicality wore us out. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Congratulations on your season. Best of luck in the future. Thank you.